To now speak more about the Canadians' new multi-captain approach and the season ahead, we are joined by our team of NHL experts in studio with Sean Coleman. New season for the Montreal Canadiens, but the same great experts for Montreal Connected are from Basu from LNH.com, Sean Gordon, Globe and Mail. Guys, the offseason, you guys have fun? You ready for a full season of hockey? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the enthusiasm. Is anybody Absolutely. ever ready for a full season <laughs> of ready. hockey? I'm you know, ready. I got to tell you, 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 sp yeah, you spend the summer thinking, oh, you know, I could, it could be fun when hockey starts. And when, it, and when it's actually upon us, it's like a... Uh, <laughs> it's daunting. It's a, long, it's a long season and it's a big grind, but it should be exciting. Hockey never ends for the fans in Montreal. And this True season, enough. the number one question was about the captaincy. Who would be captain for the Montreal Canadiens? Everyone, even my grandmother, had an opinion. Today, what did she or, think? Oh, she, she's not P.K. Subban. That was the answer. <laughs> yeah, <there you> go. <laughs> but this week, uh, Habs announcing four assistant captains. What are your thoughts on the matter? It's like well, a, it's, they're punting, right? A little bit, yeah. It's like they're pinned, they're pinned down in their own end. And they're standing on the goal line and they're punting. I think they, you know, it sort of seems to me that there would have been lots of room to make even a even a tame, boring choice mm -hmm. would have been better than a kind of non-choice. Well, that was and that was my initial reaction is that you know the last time they didn't have a captain was when you know when all these new players showed up. There was a new coach. There was all sorts of turnover. So there, a transition year was more understandable. In this case, all the guys that they chose as alternates are known guys. They know everything they need to know about them. Um, but. Upon further reflection, it just it kind of dawned on me that this, this, this choice also was to make it clear that, that Carey Price has a big role to play here, and he can't be named captain, and they want to leave a bit of leadership space kind of open or, or leave a void there for him yeah. to kind of fill in and take up. So I think that's a big part of it as well. The only reason why we're having this discussion, though, is there was a lot of turnover this offseason. Giants is gone. George is gone. Murray, Paros, you name it. There's a lot of veterans who are out the door. Did Birchbank do enough, Sean, to bring in enough veteran presence this offseason? I think you probably did, and I think when you consider the optics of the situation, it, it you know, I, I guess you ha kind of have to take them at their word, where they say, we, we do want to transition to a younger leadership group. Now, why would you transition when you're getting rid of your captain and you're getting rid of your assistant captain, and, like, is there time not now? It mm -hmm. sort of strikes me as very odd. This being said, it makes sense for a go-slow approach. It makes sense for a conservative organization. And when you look at the guys that they brought in, Manny Malhotra, uh, at the golf tournament, we were kind of joking that he's like, he's, Mike Camilleri is probably the best quote in the National Hockey League. Uh, and then you had, you had like uh, Frankie Bouillon, who might or may not be with the team, or you had Danny Briere, who is also an excellent quote. Many Mahotra is all those guys rolled into one because he's bilingual. And plus he can take a face-off or two, which kind of helps. And bringing in a guy like Tom Gilbert, who's going to have a significant role in this team. And, you know, Pea Paranto, who's a local kid and all these sorts of things. I think in terms of the veterans that they've moved out the door and the, and the veterans that they moved in the door, it's not the same kind of guy. But I think fundamentally all the same bases are covered. And also, I mean, the main thing is that you do have to take them at their word because their word makes sense. All the guys that yeah. they're looking at are coming to an age where they should be taking bigger roles and they should be more veteran-type presences. Yeah. I mean, you know, when Max Pacioretty's 25, P.K. Subban's 25, Carey's 27. Um, so some of those guys are reaching ages where they should legitimately be looked upon to be leaders on the team. Well, one guy I think all fans want to see step up to that next level is Alex Gauchenyuk. This week... Bergevin is saying Gauchenik's going to start training camp at center. Is this the year, his third year in the league, is he going to become an elite forward? Well, there's some history to suggest that that actually will be the case. There's a lot of, I mean, I, I kind of looked at all these players who played in the NHL in their draft seasons, and in many cases, more than not, the third season was really the breakthrough season. I mean, there's a lot of guys you can look at, Phil Kessel, Ryan O'Reilly, Gabe Landeskog. There's a bunch of examples of guys who had two kind of timid seasons, and in their third year, when they reached you know, their early 20s, they really became stars. And so I think, and we saw glimpses of it last season. I mean, had he not been hurt uh, in that game in Chicago at the end of the season, I think he would have had a big role to play in the playoffs. And it really was unfortunate timing for that injury. But I think they're counting on him. I, I will say that there is, a, I think, a slight, uh, I think we need to adjust our expect, expect easy for you to say, expectations <laughs> slightly. Uh, given that, yes, it's his third year in the league, but one of those years was only a 48-game season. It seems to me that, it's sort of a, it's around the 200 and 220, 230 game mark that that these players often will start to find their feet. It was the case with Max Pacioretty, notably, and others. Uh, one thing, though, is that he is absolutely an elite talent, and he's not a power player, a la Nathan McKinnon or guys like that who might have a little bit easier time establishing their game with men. 
He's a finesse guy, but he is an extremely skilled finesse guy who is going to fill the net for years to come. And I think if, if, if the Habs are going to make some noise this year, it's in part because Alex Galchenyuk has stepped to the fore as an elite young We're player. right against the clock, so I need a one-word answer from both of you. Is this team better on opening day than it was on opening day last season? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Very good. So Habs fans everywhere are rejoicing. <laughs> Could be a good year to be a fan of the Montreal Canadiens. Guys, thanks for joining me.